Hi there, and welcome to Ian's Engage channel. I'm Ian. In a previous video, I showed how I'd install the DCC bus wire beneath Shelfington and connected it to my DigiKeys DR5000 control unit. In this video, I'm going to show how I switched from using apps on my tablet to control the trains to using a handheld Wi Fi throttle. OK, so I purchased a Wi Fi throttle recently, second hand from eBay. It's a Roco Z21. WLAN mouse. Well, that's how I pronounce it, and I'm sticking with it. Why, you may ask, when I could use the Z21 app for free? Well, I'd not really been happy with using my tablet to control trains. It was a bit cumbersome to hold for any length of time, needed both hands to operate, and there wasn't really anywhere to place it when it wasn't in my hand. It may well come in very useful when I've got dozens of points that need changing via DCC, but for controlling the trains I wanted something a bit smaller and a lot more tactile. I'd read a few good reviews of the Roco device, so when one popped up on eBay for a reasonable price, I thought, well, that's worth getting. Before it could be used, the DigiKeys DR5000 needed to be configured so that the throttle could connect to it, and that meant setting it up to use the Z21 protocol. This was done at the computer, where, as a software developer, I was on familiar ground for the first time on this channel. So, first I connected the DR5000 to my laptop via USB, and made sure that the DR5000 was turned on. Alexa, turn on Shelfington. And ran the DR5000 configuration application. I then checked that the computer and the DR5000 were actually linked by switching the track power on and off from within the application. The application will also display the serial number and the IP address of the unit if a connection has been established. The setup began by clicking on the LAN button in the application and then selecting Z21 WLAN mouse from the drop down list underneath the section called DR5000 protocol. Once this has been selected, just remember to click on the tick button to save any changes. Now, it would also be worth noting down the name of the Wi-Fi network, which can be found by clicking on the Wi-Fi button. The name should be visible in the configuration box that appears under the Wi-Fi section. However, as you can see here, no Wi-Fi network is shown. So what's the problem? Well, it appears to be a common mistake made by people, and is simply that the computer isn't actually connected to the DR5000 Wi-Fi network. If we remember, we've only connected it by a USB. Obviously, if it's not connected, then information about the Wi-Fi network can't be displayed. Now, I can't go into every way of how to connect to a Wi-Fi network in Windows, but here's how I connect using my version of Windows 11. The name of the Wi-Fi network should be something like DR5000-D123456.7. And as you can see here, mine appears to be dr 5000 Dash zero zero one four one zero nine. Once connected, I can go back to the application and press the Wi Fi button again, and all of the information about the Wi Fi network will be available, including the SSID the password, the IP settings, and all of the devices connected to it, which at the moment is only my Lenovo laptop. It's worth noting down the IP address of the Wi-Fi module at this point, which has a default of 192.168.16.254. Next, it was over to the throttle to continue the setup. Right, so here's the throttle. Once switched on by pressing the OK button, the settings menu can be accessed by pressing the shift, then the menu button simultaneously. We then need to keep pressing the right button until the word settings is displayed. Now, go into the settings menu by pressing the OK button. Next, keep pressing the right button again until the screen displays Wi-Fi, 
and then press OK. The first menu item should be displayed as SSID. Press OK to select this. Once selected, you should see Search on the throttle screen, so press OK. After a small wait, a list of all discoverable Wi-Fi networks should now be displayed. Use the right button to select the name of the network noted earlier. In my case, that would be DR5000-0014109. Then press OK. As I'm already set up, I'll back out of this menu by pressing Stop instead of pressing OK. But either way, we'll end up back with the SSID on the display. We now need to enter a password for the network, so press the right button and password should be the next menu item. Press OK and you should now be able to enter the password for the DR5000 Wi-Fi network. The default password is 12345678. Once entered, press OK. Again, as I'm already set up, I'm backing out of this option by pressing the stop button. We now need to tell the throttle what IP address to use for the Z21 network. So, press the right button again and Z21 IP address should be displayed as the next menu item. So press OK. You now need to enter the phone numbers noted earlier, which should be 192.168.16.254, if you're using the default DR5000 configuration values for everything. So, enter each of these numbers, pressing OK after each one. Now, the throttle should be set up to connect to the DR5000. This is a once-only thing, and the throttle should now remember how to connect next time it's switched on. Please note that you may need to turn the throttle off and on again, so that it actually connects to the network. So let's try that. You can now see that the icon that denotes connectivity is flashing when the throttle is first switched on. But after a few seconds it should stop flashing and there should be some bars next to it showing the signal strength. There should also be a stop icon flashing denoting that power to the track is turned off. Pressing stop on the throttle should turn track power on when in drive mode. You can also check if the throttle is connected using the DR5000 configuration application. If you click on the Wi-Fi button you will see a list of connected devices in the configuration box that appears. As you can see here, as well as my Lenovo laptop, the W1 mouse controller has now appeared. Which reminds me that I must give it a better name. OK, the final step of setup is to add a loco. We can do this by switching the throttle on, then pressing the right button until the display shows the new menu command, and then press OK. Now we can enter the name of a loco. I tend to use the LOCO's number. And press OK when you've finished. Next we need to enter the LOCO's DCC address. Then press OK. After entering the address we need to enter the speed step for the LOCO. Press the right button to cycle between 1428 and 128 and select the desired speed step by pressing OK. And that's it! We've now added a loco and are ready to control it. Right, so now we've done the mundane stuff, let's play trains! At the top level menu on the throttle, pressing the right button will cycle through all of the locos that have been added to it. The controls on the throttle will act on the loco currently being shown on the display. So, here's an example of me selecting my class 101 DMU, Switching on the lights and then the engine and setting off along the back of the layout.
So, here's a little disclaimer. This video has been about how I changed my configuration values to connect my two devices together, and I really hope it helps someone who may be struggling with their setup, but obviously your mileage may differ. There really is no substitute for reading the manuals. Oh, other than being a much more tactile and pleasing thing to use than a phone or a tablet app, it can be easily attached to the side of the layout when not in use. So. I think it was a great buy all round. OK, so that's about it for this update. If you've got any hints, tips, useful tools or techniques to pass on to a beginner in Engage Modeling, or if you simply want to say hello, then please do so in the comments section. Anything and everything you've got to say will be greatly appreciated. In the meantime, thanks ever so much for watching. Hopefully I'll have another update on my progress soon. Bye.